Hey, Mech Warriors, welcome to Bad Ben's Battle Mechs. I'm Bad Ben. And here we are with part two of how to build force um, in Battletech according to the rules in campaign operations. So if you've seen part one, uh, then your T, O, and E sheet should look a little like this. All the different units that you've bought, like that. This is the TO and E sheet that you can be that you should be using. Um, I am using, of course, my fancy spreadsheet, which basically has all the same information but more, because there's a lot of other stuff that we need to calculate. Anyways, uh, enough blabber. We Last time we left off with formations, and you can see I have created my force. Jup, jup, jup. I have 12 different units. Oh. Uh, and I've separated them into uh, my forces. I have my battle lance, my command lance, and my security lance. Uh, this one's kind of funny, actually, um, but I won't get into that too much. Uh, what else? So. I've done their experience, right? Um, I've put in the cost of each one. The cost of each one of these units you can find on the master units list. Um, if you don't know about the master units list, it is here. Go type in your unit, whatever you want. Pick it. There's the price. In the book, there is a standard price for if you don't like, they say if you don't know the price of the unit that you want, uh, then use these prices. Don't use those prices. For example, any late mech on that table will tell you is 3 million C bills. This is half that price. Uh, so, yes. Um, I have done that. I calculated. I modified the cost according to its tech rating. Tech ratings I find here. I use Mega Mech. Uh, and if you don't really understand the tech ratings, well, that's all right, because I don't really either. I, I do, actually. Um Basically, you have four. Forget this, whatever's before the slash. I don't, I don't really even understand what is before the slash. <laughs> whatever, just ignore it. Um, so you have one, two, three, four, and this is basically Star League era up until about the year twenty eight hundred. Then this is the year twenty eight hundred to approximately thirty forty, when the Helm Memory Core was discovered. And then this is 3040 to about 3130 <clears throat> with, <clears throat> uh, with the whole clan invasion and the Word of Blake thing going on. And then this one is uh, Dark Age 3130 and beyond. Um, so this is my tech rating. A D tech rating is a no cost modifier. Anyways, I went over through all that stuff in the last video. I don't want to rehash it too much. Um, <clears throat> I When I went and talked about formations then, <clears throat> I actually skipped over something, and that is large craft acquisition. If you're going by exactly the, the order that the book presents it in, then the large craft acquisition comes first. <clears throat> before formations, but I wanted to do formations first uh, and do large craft acquisition now. So I've created a whole table here that helps me with uh, large craft acquisition. It does all of my fancy math for me, but I will uh, explain how we can do this by hand. Um, so 
I'm only going over drop ships and jump ships because there are also warships and space stations, uh, and they have their own mod- They have their own calculations on the role you need to get to be able to acquire that. This these things can be acquired now at this stage in force operations without paying for them. All right, all you have to do is roll to see if you get them, and they does not come off your um, money because these you, you 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 won't have enough money to buy these things anyways. They're obscenely expensive. So the book just says roll for it. If you make the roll, then you get it. Right. So, um, how do we calculate our roll for getting a dropship? So the calculation is the cost of the dropship divided by 50 million plus five. That's why my final roll here says five already. Um, so dropship cost. Uh, you can probably find it on the master units list. You can also find it here in Mega Mech Lab. Um, I'm looking for dropships. Where is it? Dropship. And uh, I'm going to look for a Union dropship. Uh, Yes. One caveat, I wouldn't get a dropship. If I was building a force, I wouldn't bother. Don't. It's it's not really that important uh, to get dropships and jump ships. You can absolutely just hire a dropship and a jump ship. There are rules for that later on in campaign operations, uh, in the force operations sections, um, on how to calculate the cost of just hiring somebody to take you to wherever you want to go. And I find that that's far more easier than running all the dropships. Plus, um, for example, a, depending on how uh, serious you want to get about it, um, a dropship should be able to carry everything that you have. If you only have mechs, that's really not a big deal. Almost all dropships can carry a certain amount of mechs, uh, and some dropships only exclusively mechs. The difficult part comes in like your this warrior VTOL or the LRM carrier or especially the elemental battle armor. Uh, finding the proper um, bay a dropship that has the proper bays to carry elemental battle armor. Bleh. So uh, you can just forget all of that and um, you know. Just hire somebody to take you. You Just do the calculations. Finished, right? So we wanted. uh, I've there's. If you're looking at union and you see that I've got like way more different unions, it's because I've created a lot of different uh, union dropships. Um, So uh, we have the price. The price is actually here. Uh, this is an expensive one. There's a cheaper one. Uh, and I'll take the cheaper one. Uh, so we need to take this 2147140080. And I'll just do this on a calculator at first. So what was it? 2147140080. Divided by 50000000000. Plus five, rounded normally, <clears throat> um, or was it rounded up? Wait a second, my uh, large craft acquisition calculator will tell me. If I put in this number. It gives me a 10. So it's rounded up to the next uh, whole number. So to get this uh, dropship, uh, right now, just based on the uh, 
the price, I have to roll 10. However, that's not the final roll. There's a whole bunch of different stuff here that will alter what our roll is going to be. And for example, the first thing here is rarity, the rarity table. If it's unique, like if it's the only one, if you make a custom one, then it's going to add another 10 to your roll, which in my opinion is makes it absolutely impossible to get a unique dropship because there's always a plus five to the roll. And, oh, no, no, okay. Um, it Yeah, yeah, other things come in. You can get some minuses here, right? Okay. So, yeah, if it's unique, it's going to be a plus 10, very rare, a plus six, rare, average, common. Um, this kind of thing is stuff you have to go and find out yourself. Uh, as far as I know, a union dropship is one of the most common dropships in the inner sphere. Uh, so I don't know if it's definitely considered common, if it isn't, whatever. Uh, but let's say it's common. Uh, so that would be a minus one, giving me a nine to my roll, right? And on my special calculator here, if I put in number five for common, then it's going to do that minus one, right? Uh, era. So... Which era am I in? <clears throat> Different eras. So, for example, if you're in the height of the Star League eras, uh, here you get a minus six to your roll because it's much, much easier to get a dropship during these times. Uh, there are times all of these are going to be minuses to your roll, uh, except for, I guess that's like the Succession War era and the Dark Ages. I am in era number nine. This era right here, the Word of Blake era, uh, which gives me a minus two. So that would actually bring my roll to a seven. And if I put in era number nine here, see my calculator does that. Now, I've got a whole bunch of miscellaneous things. Uh, because there are five miscellaneous things, and I don't know, but it seems like every single one of these could you know, it, it could be a, mil, a lithium fusion powered uh, military vehicle and you are a government force and you are a clan force. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if you're a government force, you can't also be a clan force. Who knows? And it might also be close faction. So I simply put in five different things uh, here. But you got it. This is more research. You've got to go find out about a Union dropship. As far as I know, it isn't a lithium fusion battery. It isn't a military dropship exclusively. Um, I am a government force. I am a government force. So that will actually give me a minus two. That'll bring it down all the way to a five. So for miscellaneous, I can put in a three for government force. And that brings my roll down to a five. Um, I'm not a clan force. And I don't know if it's cross faction. I don't. I'm not. If you want to go see who is allowed to get a union dropship uh, or not, go ahead. And then maybe it's a cross faction. You'd have to add a plus two to your roll, right? And then you have to decide what uh, do you want the skill of your crew to be. Okay. And if you pick green, which I would pick green, because unless you're going to be doing aerospace fighting, where your dropship is actually going to be fighting, and if you want to get a dropship, then that's probably part of, you know, um, that's probably something you might want to do with your dropship. That would be a reason that you want to do that. I'm not really interested in aerospace, and that's another reason why I wouldn't actually get my own dropship and just hire one instead. But for the sake of this, I will get a green crew. If I wanted an elite crew, it's going to be plus four. Actually, I, I could probably, you know, manage. If I rolled an eight, I'd get a, a dropship with an elite crew. However, you got to be aware that elite crews will cost you a lot more. Green crews will cost you less 
So I would definitely want to go for the green crew. Oops, what am I doing here? Uh, green crew, and that would bring my roll to a uh, four. So for me, if I roll a four now with two dice, I can have this uh, Union dropship for free. Um, this Union dropship won't actually carry everything that I have in it. It doesn't have bays for battle armor or... Um, uh, large vehicles, and I have both of those things. So it's kind of useless for me. But for the sake of figuring out how to do it, that's how you do it. And once again, the calculation, the base number is the dropship cost divided by 50 million plus five. Right? Then go over the rarity miscellaneous do any of these apply what's your crew skill what's your era and then you end up with a roll you roll it finished good moving on to jump ships jump ships are slightly more complicated not nearly as complicated as a warship holy cannoli and i'm not covering warships if you want to go figure out how to do warships you have to do like the square root of the cost divided by... Anyways, it's not important. Jump ship cost isn't that complicated. It is simply the cost of a jump ship divided by 100 million plus the number of docking callers on the ship plus three. So how do we find out all that information? All that information is going to be most easily found, I think, in Mega Mech Lab. And so we're going to go jump ship... I'm just going to see, okay, there's a whole bunch of jump ships. And we'll get maybe the cheapest one. Uh, let's have a look. It needs at least one docking collar. Otherwise, my Union dropship can't attach to it. So let's see if we can get the cheapest one here. And to find out the amount of docking collars... Um, here it is. In Mega Mech Labs, if you go to the Transport Bays tab, uh, it will tell you how many docking hard points it has. This one has one. Um, so where's the price again? Here it tells you the price down here, 389542980. I can't remember that number. Uh, what did it start with? 389542. 389. Five four two, and then nine eight zero nine eight zero, and I'll put that in. And actually, I'll take that number, and we'll do this by hand. Uh, so we have the price of the of the jump ship. This is jump ship cost divided by one hundred million equals uh, 3.8 plus the number of docking callers, in this case 1, plus 3, always plus a 3. Uh, bring it to a 7, and I believe it will also be rounded up um, to the next highest number, right? Bring me to an 8. That's what my calculator that I made here says. Um, yes. Rounding up to an 8. So that's the base number. And then the same things apply. Um, I don't know how common a scout jump ship is. I really have no idea. Is it rare? Is it average? Is it common? Uh, for this, I'll just say it's average, which gives me a zero. I don't have to do anything. Uh, I can put in my era, which was era number nine. Uh, that will give me a minus two to my roll. Um, is it lithium fusion battery? Is it? I'm a government force, so I can automatically give myself miscellaneous modifier number three, government force, bringing the roll down to a four, and that's actually very quite reasonable uh, to get. If you wanted to get an elite crew, it's going to be more. 
going to put my, oh, I can put my crew skill and get a green crew, and that'll actually bring my final roll to a three. So if I simply roll a three on 2d6, um, I have myself a scout jump ship, right? With one docking color that can hold my Union dropship that can't hold all of my team but i'm going i'm like i'm i'm going to i'm going to pretend that union dropship just can uh hold everybody you know if i wanted a dropship that i know it has 12 spots right 12 mech spots i have 12 units that's good enough for me uh if i wanted to like i could go and modify one but then it would be a unique um it would be a unique vessel, and then I would have to roll like a 16 to get it, making it impossible. Anyways, this is why this is all the reason why I, um, <clears throat> I suggest not getting um, drop ships and wait, drop ship and a scout jump ship but i'm gonna put these here um because it's going to i'm go also going to why is there an 11 there uh we're gonna have to calculate the ammo and the fuel costs and all this and i want to show you how to do all that for drop ships and jump ships as well and i can already say that this is a drop ship this one is a jump ship <clears throat> oh wait a second i just remembered something i want to separate these by one and i will show you why in a moment so i have my union drop ship and i have my scout jump ship and that's how you acquire your Drop ships and your jump ships. And you can also acquire space stations and you can get warships, but you have to go into campaign operations to figure that out because I don't want to explain that and I don't think that that's all that important. If you're that deep, if you really, if you want a warship, then you're going to probably have campaign operations anyways and understand it. Uh, the tonnage. Oh, mm, okay. Uh, actually, this is something that we do need to record. Um, you don't need to record, you don't need to know the tonnage right now, but when we um, calculate spare parts uh, later on, you definitely will need the tonnage. So it might not be a bad idea. Uh, what is that? 90,000 tons? Is that 90,000 sitting there? <clears throat> That's the Scout jump ship. 90,000. And I just so happen to, uh, I believe, I I don't know this for sure, actually. i uh, got to go back and find out what a union weighs. And I'm pretty sure it's 3,600. Uh, 3,600 tons. Yes. But you have to find out your dropship and jump ship tonnage yourself. Um, <clears throat> uh, I already said that they were green. I put that into my roll, so these guys will be green. Um, the cost is not don't if you if you're using my spreadsheet, don't record the cost here. Uh, you don't need to subtract it, and if you do record the cost here. It will automatically subtract it. Um, cost modifier uh, is also unimportant because we don't have to pay for it. So that's there are no cost modifiers on uh, dropships and jump ships. Um, roll right. I didn't actually fill out all of my different roles, and that's something I talked about last time. Uh, for example, the uh, Locust 1E e is a scout, and <clears throat> the Wolverine is a skirmisher. 
And I can't remember what the Warhammer and the Atlas and so on are. I know that the Longbow is a missile boat. Uh, but this is the stuff that's going to help you uh, put the different uh, units into different uh, formations, right? And I went over all that last time. So, large craft over. Next thing, personnel. So, uh, this covers tech teams and administrators, right? Um, and I'll make, actually, I'm going to make this some fancy color, pink maybe. Yeah, transport can be pink, and then I'm going to make personnel. And... I like that and make it some other color just because I like to do that. So I have personnel and so tech teams. Tech teams are very, very simple. Um, basically, I mean, it can get a little complicated, but it's, it's, it's not that difficult. To calculate the number of tech teams you need, you simply basically need to calculate how many units you have, in essence. Uh, so every mech needs one tech team. Every uh, vehicle needs one tech team. Um, every aerospace fighter needs one tech team. Every uh, conventional fighter and so on and so forth. Uh, the, we're, the only thing that's actually different is you only need one tech team for every uh, five battle armor, uh, and that's rounded up. Uh, so if you need 0.8 tech teams, if you do the calculations and you need 0.8 tech teams, you need one. Uh, no, it's rounded. What did I say? Did I say it's rounded up? It's rounded normally. So if you actually do your calculations and you see that, like if you have um, two battle armor, Right, you only you don't need even one tech team for them. You don't need tech teams for that. Uh, for infantry, you need one tech team for every hundred and twelve units. Hundred and twelve infantry, which is four platoons. So for every four platoons you need, you have you need one tech team. Uh, and if you need less than 0.5 of a tech team through your calculations, you don't need a tech team for those guys they can take care of it themselves so yeah basically every tech team uh every one of my units here my elemental this represents a unit of five uh five uh suits of battle armor five people in it and so that needs one tech team um every mech needs one tech team i don't have any aerospace fighters but uh doesn't matter. Every vehicle uh, needs one tech team as well. So uh, you can simply say, okay, I have 12 things that need uh, tech teams. I have 12 tech teams. Finished. All done. Uh, and if you do that, then all of your tech teams will be of regular skill. If you want to have um, a skill, you, can't, you can automatically uh, bump that down to green. If you want to uh, save some money, if you want a regular tech team, uh, 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 sorry, no, I meant a veteran tech team, you have to roll a nine or higher on 2d6 for each one of your units. If you want an elite tech team, you have to roll an 11 or higher for each one of your units. So uh, I would go, okay, for my locust 1E, the tech team, I want to be an elite, roll 11. Ah, oh, I got a 10. Shucks. Okay, well, I'll try for a veteran. Um, I need a 9 or higher. Oh, I rolled an 11. Uh, then I get the veteran tech team, and I can say, I can go over here and say, then I got a veteran tech team, right? And you can go through each one. Oh, I didn't get it for them, so it's regular. Oh, once again, didn't get them. Oh, my goodness, I got an elite tech team. I rolled an 11. I wanted an 11, I rolled an 11. Amazing. Uh, 
And that's just how you do that. Here I got much worse luck. Everybody was regular. Uh, uh, and then for my warrior VTOL, I need an 11 for an elite. And I get it. Wow, amazing. So uh, then, and then I need, I didn't get the elite, but I get veteran for this one. And the rest are going to be regular. So that's that's actually pretty lucky if I were to if I were to do this and you get like two elite tech teams. Elite tech teams are really good. Now there are caveats in the book on how many tech teams you need. You don't actually, if you need to save money, uh, you don't need to have uh, full tech teams for everyone. You can have mech warriors working as part time as uh, as techs assistant technicians um there are rules for that and um if you want to do that then read the rules in under uh, acquiring personnel in campaign operations uh, i don't find it's not that important i think if if you need to get rid of tech teams to save money then you need to rethink your whole mercenary business or something because they don't cost like on the grand scale of things, they don't cost that much. I suppose through um, play, maybe tech teams uh, get killed or uh, leave or something like that. And then you'll be down and then you can go into campaign operations and read the rules for, um, using mech warriors as doing double duty as Aztecs or what have you. I am not going to do that. Um, your drop ships and your jump ships don't need their own tech teams. The crew of the ships are the tech teams that take care of that. So in this case, I have 12 tech teams of which uh, I have two, six, Eight regular tech teams. So I'm going to write here eight tech teams. All right? I can say that those are tech teams. I don't think that really makes a difference. Um, they don't have a tonnage, uh, but their experience, these will be the regulars. All right? Um, and tech teams don't have tech teams, so that's blank. Uh, they also don't have costs or cost modifiers or any of that stuff. Uh, a lot of these things are only for the units. <sighs> um, <clears throat> so I have eight tech teams who are regular. And how many veterans? I have one, two veteran tech teams. So two tech teams. Say that that's a tech team. And their skill is veteran. And then I have two more tech teams whose skill are elite. Right? Um. <clears throat> So that's that's uh, tech teams in a nutshell. It's it's pretty basic. It's pretty straightforward. Every unit needs one tech team role. Uh, if you want it them to be green, you can do that automatically uh, to save money. If you want them to be veteran, you need to roll a nine. Uh, if you want them to be an elite, you need to roll uh, eleven on each one of your units that needs a tech team, and that's how that works. Uh, now that brings us to administrators. Why is that on the right hand side? I don't like that. Everything uh, on the left hand side, it should be on the right hand side. Yeah. Uh, administrators are administrators. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think that they have um, 
they don't have experience. They don't need to be elite or veteran or whatever. They can be green. It You can just leave that empty. Uh, they don't need their own tech teams. They don't have a cost and all that. All we really need to know is how many administrators do we uh, need? And the answer for this uh, leads us to do, 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 here, our personnel column. To know how many administrators we have, uh, we need, we need to know how many personnel we have in total. And this is, uh, for th some things, pretty straightforward, some other things, uh, a little more difficult. So mechs are super easy. They each have one. So for each of these four and these four, they each have one. And I can go to person total, and I can just put what? No, that's the wrong. That's the locust here. One, 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 one. one. So those are all one mech warrior. No, that's not what I want to do. And uh, my program is already calculating salary because I've done that, but we'll get to salary uh, later. So mech warriors are super easy. Uh, mechs are super easy. They each have one. Uh, vehicles. Every vehicle has one crewman per 15 tons or fraction of 15 tons so uh, a vehicle that is 15 tons will or less will have one uh, crewman anything over 15 if you have a 16 ton vehicle it will have two crewmen uh, all the way to 30 if you have 31 or more to 45 then there's three and so on and so forth so my warrior VTOL H10 is 20 tons meaning it has Personnel is two personnel, two crew members. And I can say that they are vehicle crewmen. Uh, next, I have my elemental battle armor. And uh, there are five people in the squad. There are five uh, elemental warriors. So they are five. And... Do, 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 specialist armor infantry. Then I come over here. The LRM carrier that I have is 60 tons divided by 15. Gives me four crew members in my LRM carrier. And they are vehicle, do, 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 vehicle crew. And finally, I have the Skulker Wheeled Scout C3M which is 20 tons, meaning it gets two crewmen who are also doo -doo 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 -doo, vehicle artillery crewmen. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, so that's, that's all of the units. That's uh, fairly easy. Um, the more difficult things to find out, but not especially difficult, are the crews of the Union and the Scout jump ship. And to do that, we'll just use our favorite uh, tool here. Does it say crew just here? Do I have to actually empty? Ah, okay, yeah, look. Uh, okay. So uh, this is a little confusing. This says uh, Bay Personnel 28. There are not 28 Bay Personnel. They're, that's not, they don't earn part. Here, actually, I'll just, um, basically, there's 11 enlisted people and three officers. And I'll select this, and I'll show you how I know that. Uh, yeah, so if you come over here, we're in the Union dropship. It says Total Crew 14. Officers and uh, standard 11, right? Three officers, 
uh, 11 enlisted people. Bay personnel, that, uh, that is how many people... Um, yeah, the, it, it actually just said it right there. The additional crew capacity provided by transport bays. So that, that's extra capacity that it could take. Um, so I have 14 crew, 11 of which are officers and... Uh, no, three of which are officers, 11 of which are enlisted. And that's important, even though we haven't gotten to officers yet. Um, it's you should separate them because they cost different things. So Union Dropship is here, just under transport. And if I go to person total, um, I can put in 11 here and a three here so that's the 11 enlisted people and that's the three uh, officers and that's why I separated these um, by one so I would have uh, two spots um, and actually I can also say that these guys are green uh, actually to make this more clear I can write this and then I can write <clears throat> ship uh, officers, and I can do the same thing. Listed and wait. and officers and all of them are green but uh in here i wouldn't put like the i wouldn't put don't put the tonnage twice <laughs> don't say that the you only the drop ship maybe you don't want to do it this way uh it doesn't really make a difference um either way Got to find out what the scout jump ship has for a crew. Jump ship, scout, and we'll just select that. And it'll say total crew 18, 16, standard, two officers. Good enough for me. Uh, so we'll come over here. 16 and two officers. And we can say what they are. Do, 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 do. Dropship crew. These are also dropship crew. These are all jump ship crew. And these guys are also jump ship crews. Um, yes. So now we have the total number of people in our... Uh, Outfit so far. Uh, nope. Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, eight tech teams. Two tech teams, two tech teams. Um, so, what's a tech team? How many people in a tech team? There are seven people per tech team. Uh, ooh, I just realized something. I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to get rid of these administrators, eight tech teams, and I want to put a space in between them. And when you're recording this, whether you're recording this here or on the uh, official T-O-N-E sheet, you probably also want to leave a space. And these were the vets. And these were uh, the elite. And uh, the reason I do that is 
These are my tech teams here. Yes. The reason I do that is because for every tech team, it has eight technician, ugh, eight technician, one tech, like official tech, and six as techs, right? So uh, in my eight tech teams that are regular, I have eight techs. Uh, and I can say that they are technicians, right? And if you're using this sheet here, you do also want, actually, actually, I'm just going to pause for a moment. All right. I just want to show this, how they write. So, for example, they've written 12 tech teams regular uh, and two tech teams elite that this person has for their units. Uh, and the way that they've written this over here is all on the same line, 12 techs, 72 Aztecs. And then they simply calculated the price, the cost for all of these and uh, for all of these on the next line uh, over there. On my sheet over here, I want to separate it. Uh, what's 8 times 12? 96? No, not 8 times 12. 8 times 6 is what I want. What's 8 times 6? 48? 8 times 6 is 48. I knew that. Uh, so I have 48 Aztecs. And they will cost different, right? Uh, on this was this was the row for my um, vets, so that's going to be two techs and twelve technicians. Uh, Aztecs, ugh, I don't know what I'm even talking about. So two technicians and twelve Aztecs for those teams, and this was going to be the same. These guys are the vets. Oops, and twelve Aztecs. Aztecs. Okay. Now we know how many people are in our um, whole company here. And so what you want to do is simply add up all of these numbers, find out how many people are in your entire uh, company, in your entire uh, force. Uh, I have it here. I have 137. Um, uh, so basically, the um, calculation is for administrators, which is what we're doing. That's why we needed the number, the total of personnel mm -hmm. that we have, including all the technicians and all the mech warriors and crew pilots and the jump ships and drop ships, everybody. Uh, take this number, divide it by 10. And that's how many administrators you need. I just need to uh, remember whether you need to round up or normally or what. Just give me a moment. Yes, it is rounded up. So uh, 30, 137 divided by 10 uh, is 13.7. Rounded up is 14. So I would need for this force 14 administrators. Um, government forces, however, uh, oh, what did I write there? I am a government force. I've changed all that for whatever reason. My force name is Bad Ben's Business. Which is a strange name for a government force from the Magistracy of Canopus. I understand, but I don't care. Um, so, uh, what was I talking about? I'm a government force. Government forces only need half the admins. So, if I need 14 um, admins, I actually need... Uh, 
just uh, seven, right? Admins. My admin team. I can say that they are administrators. Uh, I don't need to give them um, a rank. I simply need to write how many I have. And I need seven because I'm a government force. Otherwise, you need however many people you uh, have divided by 10, um, round it up, right? Nice and easy. Administrators are easy. Um, administrators are great. They do a lot of stuff for you. Uh, wait. <laughs> One more moment. Right. Um, admins uh, do not have a skill rating that is necessary for um, gameplay but are considered regular for the uh, for their pay. So you can jot that down if you feel like it. So that's administrators. Um, now comes officers, right? We need to calculate officers. Now um, I'm just going to read... Okay, I'm a, I'm a little confused about officers, <laughs> not 100% confused. So one thing that's very easy is for every mech lance, one person needs to be um, an officer. So you would just mark down here if they are an officer or not. Um, Bah, 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 bah. No, that's not the picture I wanted either. Yes, officers. First of all, I just wanted to show an example of how uh, they've done uh, their sheet up until this point. Um, and in the person where they mark where whether it's an officer is here on the personnel tab. They just put an O next to the officer, right? Um, uh, so yes, <laughs> uh, only, okay. For the vehicles, for example, you have, oh yeah. Okay. This is getting more complicated. Um, you can say whether one of the people in the vehicles is an officer or not. So in this case, they're, in their first lance here, right? They need one officer for these four guys. For these bulldog groups, right? They need one officer out of everybody uh, in the crew. So out of the bulldog crew that needs four crew, one of them is an officer, right? Um for the foot platoons, uh, one of the people in uh, the squad is going to be an officer. Um, for the pack rats as well, do they have, let's see, two crew, two crew, two crew. And yeah, one crew, uh, one officer here. Uh, for the dropships, we've already uh, said who is an officer. For the tech teams, it's not important who is an officer or not. So, yes. Officer. They can be an officer. The rest can be enlisted. It doesn't really matter who. No, wait. No, that can't be right. The axeman must be the officer. It does matter because uh, I am the pilot of the axeman. If you've noticed here that I have an elite axeman um, and have actually gone and seen that that's impossible because the Magistracy of Canopus doesn't have access to uh, that axeman and getting an elite one would mean that my acquisition role was be impossible. But uh, I just fudged it because I wanted to. I like the axeman and I wanted that axeman. And this is 
me. This is the the mech that I will pilot my player character. And I just made myself elite because I wanted to. And the book says go ahead and do that if you feel like it. It doesn't all have to be rolled perfectly. Anyways, so for the mech crews and all that, it's uh, fairly easy. And what I'll do for <laughs> for this squad, I, I think, I believe... One of my uh, battle armor guys must be an officer. I don't. I don't want to do that. I don't care. I'm not going to skip to the rules super duper hard. So yes, for every battle armor point that you have, one of these people must be an officer. I don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to take the skulker. I'm going to split this and say one enlisted and one officer just to be able to uh, say for that for, for this lance there's one officer um, and even if technically by the rules one of these uh, battle armors should be an officer I don't really care I don't want to do that uh, as for here uh, right these are our crewmen. We already said that it has 11 enlisted and three officers. Da, 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 da. Enlisted and two officers. Right? Uh, techs don't need... Um, Sex don't need a uh, rank <coughs> and <coughs> well, neither do the administrators. Um, they can all be, you can consider them all enlisted. Uh, you don't have to say that they're enlisted, right? Um, on this, nobody, they don't even write. If it doesn't have an O, <coughs> it's not enlisted. Um, so, that brings us to the end of the personnel. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video as well, since I don't want to make these super duper long. Um, I hope all of this made sense. <laughs> uh, and I hope you join me for part three, where we are going to be going over uh, ammo tons, Ammo cost, spare tons, uh, spare parts tons, and spare part cost, fuel tons, and fuel cost. And that will be uh, essentially it. One more video to calculate all these things. It's not going to be very long. I'm not going to calculate everything. Uh, but I'll, I'll just explain it. So, thanks for watching, guys, and hope to see you next time. Hope you learned something. Uh, yeah, bye-bye.